This example is for kinetic molecular theory and specifically, more specifically, uh, Graham's law and effusion rates. And remember, effusion is the one is like a sample, and we have like a hole, and it goes into a vacuum, and it creates, and we can calculate how long it would take, and it's effusion rate. And remember, it's just with effusion. So we know that a sample of ni dinitrogen oxide effuses from a container in 42 seconds. How long would the same amount of iodine gas take to effuse it from the same container under the same conditions? So we have Graham's Law, right? We've been given time, which is can be converted to a rate, and we are looking for the iodine gases uh, time to do the same thing. So we're going to use Graham's Law, which if you recall is rate of A over rate of B equals the square root of the molar mass of B over the molar mass of A. So we have a lot, a couple of things going on. Remember, it's A over B, and under the square root, it's B over A. So they are flipped. So these two will match, and these two will match on their information. So the first thing to remember is that we were given 42 seconds, which is a unit of time. That's not a unit, it's not a rate, exactly. So we have to make the unit of time into a rate. And we're trying to find time for the second one. So it's going to get a little, we have to just be careful with our units on this side. The molar masses are pretty straightforward. We know it's N2O and I2, so we can go ahead and calculate those. So we're gonna, we know N2O, the molar mass, equals two nitrogens and an oxygen, which is 44 grams per mole. Then we know that I2, the iodine, is the same thing. We multiply um, by two and we get the molar mass equal to 253.8 grams per mole. So we have the molar masses, so that is what's going to go under the square root over here. So the trick is to figure out the rates. And remember, a rate is anything per unit of time. So we were given in times of seconds, so we can make the rate equal to 1 over the time, which will be 1, which will be per second. So let's fill in this side of the formula because we know what it is. We're going to fill in. We can assign A and B anything we want to be in these two. We just need to be consistent. So I'm going to make N2OA and iodine B. So for B, we're going to have to put in iodine. So we're going to put in 253.8 grams per mole and 44 grams per mole. So we have the B and the A covered. So now remember on this side, it's the reciprocal of that for the information. So what is our rate of A? Our rate for nitrogen, dinitrogen oxide is 1 over 42 seconds. That's our rate per unit of time. We need to find the time for iodine. So it's also the same way. We're going to be solving for 1 over its time. So in this, we are solving for T. Now, there's several ways you could have set that up and several ways to go about it from this way. You can do reciprocal fractions and simplify this side and simplify this side, which is what I'm going to do. And so once you calculate this out, divide it, and get a square root, you get a number around 2.4 is what this comes down to. This side, I'm just going to rewrite it in a different way so it's easier to see. I know it's 1 over 42 divided by 1 over its time. And if we know from the basic algebra, it's going to be times t when we flip it. Right? So now we have this side, t over 42 seconds is equal to 2.4. So now cross multiply and divide, and we get a time of around 100 seconds. So it would take iodine 100 seconds to go to do the same thing that dinitrogen oxide did in 42. Now remember, we are the trick to this is it's a rate, so we need it to be in per unit of time. So a rate will equal 1 over a unit of time. It could be per hour, it could be per minute. It depends on the problem, but a rate is essentially per unit of time. And remember, on this side, it's the opposite. So these connect and these connect. And now this, it's just division, 1 over 42 divided by 1 over t. 
Um, you can have a variety of things. You might be solving for a molar mass, but be given a time here. So it's just going to be solving for one of these four variables.